Hello and welcome to the River Rain Show. Tonight I have a special guest. I'm so excited because I followed this guy on TikTok of all things um, for a little over a year. And I don't think anyone knew how TikTok would explode or change people's lives, but it really, it really, really has. So I started following the Hebridean Baker about a year ago. And I've watched this entire journey from a guy teaching Gaelic, making a few things to eat, to seeing a whole family, a dog, a husband, <laughs> seeing the Hebrides, and now uh, a cookbook coming out. So I want to welcome my guest, Cognac, the Hebridean baker. Did I say this right? <laughs> you did, Catherine. You did. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> well, Falcha. Catherine, lovely to meet you. And I should say, we've, I feel like we've known each other for a very long time, but in this wonderful world, this is the first person, first time we've had the chance to speak uh, properly. So lovely to meet you too. Yes, thanks. I have that feeling too, like that familiarity for some reason. I, I wonder whether, do you think the process of, of making these videos or the way you've done it has allowed you this kind of intimacy feeling with, with other people you follow or have followed you? Well, um, it probably, I, I wish, Catherine, I could tell you that right at the start, I had this strategy <laughs> of what was going to happen. But I promise you, I think my first video was me making a, a, a ginger loaf. And mm -hmm. I just did it because uh, my partner, Peter, who I'm sure we'll talk about, loves mm -hmm. ginger loaf and friends of his said, oh, I keep hearing about it. So it was the easiest way for me to format a video. Mm -hmm. I thought, I might as well share it. And yes, I certainly didn't know where this journey was going to take me. So you didn't set out to do baking. You know, I think, do you know what I would say, Catherine? Um, I set out to, for it to be a kind of creative outlet. Uh, mm -hmm. I think all of us during lockdown wanted to be able to exercise our, our minds and our energies in, in different ways. And what I definitely wanted to do was to ha have somewhere where I could promote the Hebrides, promote Scotland, uh, the language of Gaelic, our, and just our culture and our maybe our differences that are very familiar to us but maybe weren't familiar to others. And I just thought that baking was a really good conduit to make that happen. Um, mm -hmm. And uh, yes, sometimes I do more uh, familiar recipes, sometimes traditional recipes, but that's the part that resonated. And uh, so, yes, now I'm the head. Yeah, it's really incredible. And um, I'm just, I have to compliment you guys on how well everything's filmed. Like I sat, I sat there going, gosh, like if I had to film myself cooking, I just, I wouldn't even know where to start with the lighting and where to set my camera up and how to, and I mean, it just looks so professional what you guys have done from the get go. Thank you. Well, that, that <laughs> is probably pure luck. Um, <laughs> I, I film everything myself. Peter is a professional cameraman right. and i'd love oh. to tell you that i learned everything from him and he <laughs> helped me in the kitchen but no um i the, <laughs> i have one of those big arm things that i move about okay and okay you can imagine really. Catherine during winter time here it's dark yeah the, you know the i mean until maybe 11 o'clock you can't film because it's too dark even in the kitchen and wow. then by the time it gets to like 2 p.m. again. So in the winter, I had this really short window of being able to film. And so I'm quite pleased now it's getting a bit more uh, spring-like here. So Yeah, uh, so what are, what are your uh, daylight hours right now as we speak? We're, we're uh, the new moon tomorrow. And yeah, then... that's right. Well, I mean, th this is, of course, just the most wonderful time of year. May... Um, is a bit of a transition. It's, it is very much our spring. Um, mm -hmm. We also have a much later spring than maybe uh, our, our southern neighbours. Um, mm -hmm. But I would say at the moment, um, it's maybe about 6 a.m., lovely daylight, all the way to about 10 p.m. Oh. And as we go into June, 
I mean, in at the end of June, if if I drove at midnight, I wouldn't need to put my car lights on. You know, it's it's really that the sun does set, yeah, but it's interesting. you know, it kind of just sets and then goes up again. So, um, oh. it's a wonderful time. Beautiful. And um, what kind of vegetation do you have on the? Uh, you're and you're in the Isle of Lewis, is that right? Yeah. So I'm uh, the Isle of Lewis is the farthest north of the Outer Hebrides. Mm -hmm. So um, actually, Catherine, I was filming with uh, the BBC uh, last week, oh, uh, nice. the, the BBC travel show, which was really exciting. Mm -hmm. and the <laughs> presenter was trying to put into context, because they're all from London, where he was in the world. And I was trying <laughs> to explain, um, right now he was closer to the south coast of Iceland than he was to the south coast of England. Wow. So we, we are a, a, a northern a northern island, and so our our vegetation and our grounds are not that fertile, to be honest yeah. with you. And okay. we uh, we had, as Ireland had during those periods, terrible famines and and, and potato yeah. famines. Um, but you will see a lot of beautiful heather uh, of all different colours and a beautiful, uh, um, what we call macher, which is the grass that grows on the sands um, oh. or beautiful beaches. And mm. once, you, once you see the macher grass and flowers, it's just one of the most beautiful sights in the world. Is it sort of prickly grass like you get in Florida almost? It's 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 kind of it just kind of flows in the wind like oh, it's okay. just iconic. Oh, I mean, nice. I honestly, um, everybody, if you just get the chance, type in Macher, M A C H A I R, Isle of okay. Lewis, and okay, you'll just it'll make you want to visit even more. Yeah. And you've got tons of seaweed though, is that right? Yeah, it's really interesting actually. I'm working with, um, there's a distillery opened in Harris and it's got, it's at the moment just gin because their whiskey is doing what it needs to do and maturing <laughs> well. Um, but it's a very iconic bottle, the Harris distillery. And they're made, when they made the decision to what botanicals they were going to use, they actually decided to use sugar kelp, so seaweed, uh -huh. instead of any land-based botanicals because it was easier to, to get on the islands uh, be, rather than worrying if one of the kind of on-land botanicals would grow that year. So yes, lots of, lots of seaweed and all of it edible as well. Yeah, it's very interesting. So I wonder if it makes the, the product any healthier because seaweed's supposed to be so good for you. Mm, well, I, I, I <laughs> I'm not too sure about that. So yeah, that, yeah. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I've noticed there's a there's an there's a lot of your recipes that do seem to include whiskeys and stuff in them. <laughs> Again, it's, it's funny it's great. Mentioned that. I know I honestly hadn't noticed myself. I, I think there's just certain ingredients that maybe people maybe assume or presume might be in Scottish recipes whiskey marmalade even rhubarb is maybe synonymous certainly in oh. in Europe to be quite a Scottish uh ingredient I don't know why um oh. yeah so rhubarb doesn't grow there or does it it does grow really well it's one oh, of the okay. things that grows extremely well so I think there are certain things that just for people give it that extra Scottishness and whiskey Whiskey definitely does that for sure. Yeah. So do you, what do you find are your most um, popular recipes? Uh, or did you design it like, I feel like making this because Peter and I love to eat that. So I'm just making it. Or do you get requests from people to make st certain things or? Well, as I said, this was very organic. Yeah. So <laughs> absolutely. Okay. What am I making today? Okay, yeah. <laughs> I think I can make a video. And one thing that did resonate from the beginning was when I joined TikTok, probably what made me wow and gasp were all these uh, extravagant bakes, you know, 10 tiered cakes and ones that took yeah. three weeks to make. But then I thought to myself, I love, I love watching these videos, but I'm never going to make any of yeah, these. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. yeah. So I took a very different tact where I thought, okay, 
I always make things in my one pound loaf tin, the smallest yes, I loaf, noticed loaf that. tin. It's cute. And um, because I just think, okay, well, in a, it's for two very hungry people or for re- normal people. But yeah. it's, <laughs> it means that um, nearly every day I can bake something new. And uh, so it very much was what we enjoy eating. I wanted to try different things. But this, it's amazing what what works and, and doesn't work. Certainly traditional Scottish recipes work yeah. really well. Actually, I'm sitting here with my um, ah, fluty nice. dumpling, my duff, which is the most traditional uh, of Hebridean bakes. This is my aunt, um, who is 92 years old. Wow. And makes the best fluty dumpling, full stop. So um, what is fluty dumpling exactly? So Clutie Dumpling is a boiled fruit cake. Okay. Um, there's something ah. quite unique about it, which you might not see on screen, but can you see it's actually got a skin? Yeah, almost like a bread, it looks like. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. And how you, how huh. you make that is you actually boil it in, well, my aunt boils it in an old um, pillowcase, but in a muslin <laughs> cloth, and you boil it, You so you... After you got all the greens together, which are quite standard fruit cake ingredients, some spices and dried fruit and molasses and all the nice things, mm-hmm. then you put the cloth in hot water, boil in hot water, wring it out, then you put it onto the table, and you scatter quite a liberal amount of flour. Uh-huh. Before you put the uh, the ingredients, the mixed ingredients in, you tie that up and you boil it for about three hours on a simmer. Oh, wow. And the, huh. the, the, the flour and the boiling mechanism creates this, yeah, kind of quite um, thick skin in it that you either love or you mm. hate. I love. So what's the texture of it like? What would you compare it to? Oh my goodness, that is a is good Is it like point. a peel? Like a like an orange peel texture almost? Or Actually, a... I might even use that, Catherine. It's like okay. a soft <laughs> orange peel, exactly. And, and it's interesting because um, with duff or clouty dumpling, that's the same thing, just different languages. Um, mm-hmm. The first couple of days you eat it as a dessert. Okay, so it's it's like seen as kind of after dinner or, or, or afternoon treat. But then from the third day, you have it with breakfast. Oh, yeah. So, you, so like, say if I was making, like, bacon and eggs or sausage and eggs for breakfast, once the bacon has been fried, I would slice up the fruitcake and fry it in the bacon fat. Oh, my gosh. Oh, my gosh, that sounds good. Wow, <laughs> that sounds really rich. And then it, do you just eat it like that on its own, or do you spread something on it all off as well? <laughs> you, you have it with the eggs and the bacon. Yeah. And oh all my those gosh. Eggs. It's the dream, dream. So well, it lasts the whole mm, week. <laughs> a lot of the food you're making, I mean, I've watched the whole time. I, I have to say, I've been a bit lazy to bake myself, but I, I mean, every time I'm, I'm like, wow, my God, that looks good. And and I was I was curious how big your little how big is this cake you're making? Because after a while, I'm like, God, these guys are eating a lot of cake. <laughs> you know, there's only two. And every couple of days, there's another cake. So yeah. is it is it we, just like a few inch by a few inch kind of thing? It's, like, yeah, you know? I mean, again, th- th- one of the challenges Catherine and I appreciate is <laughs> the pounds and ounces and grams and milliliters oh, yes, and cups yes. and all those things. So apologies to everybody who sits there going, I'd like to make this, but I don't understand grams and millimeters. But what I will say is the best, I promise you the best thing you'll ever buy, two things you'll buy, is uh, electronic scales, which you can buy for Uh, $10. Okay. And that means you can press between all the different types of uh, weights and a one pound loaf tin. Okay. Because for me, it doesn't matter what I put in, as long as it goes in for 30 minutes, it always seems to come out cooked. Okay. <laughs> so, uh, and I can eat it in, you know, two or three slices. And you bake it usually in metal or it's glass or does it matter? It's, it's, it's a little metal tin. Okay. Uh, and I also love, um, you get these little cake 
uh, rather than trying to figure out how to put um, grease poof paper and like oh, that, yeah, yeah. you get these preset kind of uh, cake uh, papers. I don't know what to call them. Um, oh, it's like again, a parchment kind of thing? Yes, but fit in the shape of the, the tin. Ah. And that means you don't need to grease it. And when it comes out, you just pull it out. So, right. Oh, it's sort of like when we have, I don't know if we have, we must have similar products, but it's I'm like sure. when you have those little muffin tin liner things pre-made yes. for cake for your pound cake correct That's interesting i don't i don't think i've seen that over here it's funny actually when i have put we them on TikTok, grease our pans all, yeah, you know, liberally all yeah. the time yeah but when i put that on when people see it on tiktok they do get quite excited that i've come up with some magical thing <laughs> <laughs> i really wish i'd come up with that for sure <laughs> have you thought of adding some of those things to your roster now that you're going to have a cookbook and um you can have a line of, I don't know, some of your tools and supplies. <laughs> you know, Catherine, I'm still, you can imagine, I'm still pinching myself yeah. that the cookbook is, is happening. It's, I mean, as you say, I've been doing this for really a year. Yeah. Um, I mean, I've always baked, I've always loved baking, but uh, the profile has come over the, the last year. And I mean, even in the first few months, I still had like, a few hundred or maybe a thousand followers it's you know really yeah. since maybe I don't know last September which is just crazy that it's gone um it's gone a little bit more viral as, as, so, as, so yeah. is there a video that launched suddenly your visibility because a lot of people will they're still mystified as to really I just I was walking down the street eating an apple and that's what you okay and TikTok will just all of a sudden exponentially you so i'm just curious which... all, all of a sudden i and i really wish one day i could say that i learned how to had to bake properly or i did this or i changed my hat or something yeah but, yeah uh, <laughs> yeah <laughs> but really i think i think one of the first big ones was um my what I would call homemade crunchy, which okay. is the honeycomb and chocolate. Mm. And like, I think within a day and a half, I had something like half a million people view the video. Incredible. And, and it was one of those, I didn't even plan to make a video because I thought who's going to want to, everybody knows how to make honeycomb. But, then you know, <laughs> but no, oh, we don't actually over yeah. here. <laughs> yeah. Um, <laughs> but I think Catherine, I think there's a couple of things that happened and one, um, one of them was our old uh, our old pal, Mr. Trump. Remember yeah. when? He, <laughs> remember when he um, was going to ban TikTok in the US? Yes. Yes. Well, um, you know the the magazine Elle magazine. Yes. Uh, the US Elle magazine wrote an article about me, and Catherine, I'm oh, going wow. to quote, I'm going to quote their words. Promise you, not mine. But yeah. the headline in the L magazine was what I'll miss about TikTok is this sexy Scottish. <laughs> <laughs> and That's she called, great. She called me. Um, she said, he's uh, this is what I imagine if a piece of shortbread came to life. <laughs> this is what it would, it would be like. <laughs> And that's a the, huge compliment oh my god so smooth like right. butter sweet <laughs> yeah. refined lovely <laughs> so, so kind of i think that's wow. when my kind of north american side because really i think yeah, it's now okay. got maybe about 137,000 followers that's um, incredible and i think about 115,000 of them are in the u.s and canada so yeah obviously that makes sense. i love my friends across the world <laughs> And you have visited us. I know you've told me, but I'm curious, like where where all have you been in North America? Well, I'm really fortunate to have traveled a lot in North America. And it started, I had uh, a great aunt who lived in Etobicoke, just outside oh, yeah. Yeah, Toronto. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And uh, when I was 19, uh, she invited me over to stay. And she has the most wonderful name. I mean, I can't imagine what it would have been like to have lived in Canada with this name. So her first name was Peggy, which is a pretty traditional Scottish name. Yeah. Her husband was Archibald. Okay, mm -hmm. again, <laughs> a very Scottish name. But their surname was Mac Spotton. 
Oh yeah. So you know the spotting is the is the purse that you wait in front yeah. of. Yeah. <laughs> so my aunt's name was Peggy McSpotten. I mean, she That's might a as great well. Name. Just, <laughs> amazing name, but yeah. I mean, you could not hide the fact that you're Scottish. Yeah. If exactly. your name is Peggy McSpotten. <laughs> That's true. Uh, and she was a real character. Um, and so I'm very lucky to have visited Toronto a number of times. And I think it's a wonderful city. I've been to Montreal. Yay, uh, yes. <laughs> and, uh, also a little bit of the West Coast uh, in Vancouver and around that area. Uh, the, in Canada, I just cannot wait to be able to visit again because my dream holiday, my dream holiday is to go to Cape Breton and Nova Scotia, the Cape oh. Trail, which would just be my dream. I'm sure, yeah, I'm sure you love that. Yeah, so, the that, friendliness that's, that's, as well, you know. Ah, and just the fact, I mean, that the, you know, there's a large Gaelic community there. Um, and uh, my my other life, maybe what I'm more known for in, in the Hebrides is that I sing in Gaelic. That's what oh. I've done for many, many years. When when I meet people at home, they thought they say, Aren't don't you sing? When did you start baking? <laughs> and then when I tell people you know me as a baker, they're like, you know, you sing. Pretty soon you'll sing and bake. Is that not? <laughs> so, um, I'd love to tell us about a... your singing, yeah. Well, I've I mean singing is just a normal thing when you're from the Hebrides you sing it's just it's just part of uh, our culture and mm. singing in Gaelic I've never I don't think I've ever sang an English song in my, really? my life uh, oh, wow. uh, and so we have a, a, a thing called the Royal National Mod and the mod is basically the best way to describe it is like a Gaelic version of the Eurovision Song Contest oh yeah but much more <laughs> Um, much more traditional, very formal, but it's live on TV every night for a week, every year. Oh, wow. And um, th three years ago, um, there's a number of different competitions depending on what style you have. Are you singing a cappella or with instruments? Are you a band? Are you a soloist? Mm -hmm. Three years ago, I won the competition, which is called the Silver Pendant competition, which is one of the main competitions. And then the next year, myself and Peter won the mod as a duet. Oh, wow. And so later this wow. year, uh, well, last year we got a record deal before TikTok. Really? Began. Yeah. Um, oh, my but gosh. Because, <laughs> but because of lockdown, obviously getting into the studio has been impossible. But we're, we're, we've got a record that will come out later this year. And wow. we are called uh, Gilin Khalin in Gaelic. Uh, okay. which in, in English means the Hogmanay boys, Hogmanay being New Year's Eve in Scotland. So okay. all our songs are Cayley songs or fun songs about the traditions of New Year's Eve, which for us is on the 12th of January. Uh, so there, wow. it's, there's lots of old songs. And what we've done through lockdown is done lots of research into all these wonderful songs that maybe haven't been recorded for 70 years, 80 years, 100 years, or sometimes never, that isn't an actual recording of them. Are these and sort of pagan songs, would you say then? They are, no, I, they're, they're, they are just talking about, I mean, a lot of our rituals around Hogmanay, or as we call it, Eichhaven, are very pagan. So when I was growing up, even though maybe that wasn't our mindset when we were doing it, but um, on New Year's Eve, all the children of the village would go around to each house and the, the oldest uh, boy, he would wear a sheepskin and we would go round the house three times, knocking on the outside walls of the house mm -hmm. to knock away the bad spirits. Yeah, yeah, that's year. very pagan. Yeah, yeah. And then we would we would sing what's called a doing, which is like um, well a short poem, mm -hmm. um, asking the 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 lady of the house to come down to see us and for her to bring her best bread her best cheese, her best butter. Uh, and then we would be invited into the house and we would have um, a candle made out of um, the sheepskin. Mm -hmm. 
and mm. we would light it we would light it in the fire uh, of the the home we would we would get to and each we would pass it around the head of each of the family members three times and if the candle would go out um it was seen as quite bad misfortune for the year ahead yeah yeah like uh, negative energy around you taking yeah. your light yeah i understand yeah um wow so and then the back door would as, and as we would leave they would give us gifts like bread or cheese or when or in my day sweets and things like that mm -hmm. um and then they would open the back and front door of the house mm -hmm. uh, to kind of get uh, all yeah. the bad spirits away so there's a lot of um he, the European and Christian aspects are, it's hard to know which, wh wh where they've come from because predominantly our rituals around festive periods like uh, Sabin, you know, in, in yeah. October uh, and Echichalvin in, in December and January are yeah. from way before Christianity, um, very influenced by our. Uh, uh, Viking fathers. Yep, yep. As well, so. well, I mean, the Christians just superimposed their own holidays onto the pre existing pagan in the first place, right? Like Yule, like. It, like so, Yule, right? yeah. 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 It's interesting that your New Year's the 12th. I wonder why, like, what is that? I mean, is it a lunar cycle? Like the. It's, like the, it's the it's the calendar and you know this oh, is it's one a calendar. particular calendar it's the is it the julian cal i always mix up and apologies to anybody listening if i get this wrong but whatever the current calendar is it's the one before so i don't know if that's the julian calendar but i'm look sure that, that up people, to you yeah yeah okay but if people okay. are shouting right now at the screen saying it's this one yeah yeah so, if they were on yeah. tiktok they'd all be commenting right now <laughs> to, to um, us. <laughs> but uh yes yeah, so the 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 on the Hebrides, and still now, we we do celebrate the thirty first of December, but we also do celebrate the twelfth of January as well as our New Year. So, yeah, calendars are a fascinating subject, honestly. Because I mean, I wasn't aware that you followed this one. But, I mean, I'm a, more aligned with the North American versus you know the Chinese New Year, a lunar calendars, mm -hmm. and then and they the date floats. You know, but it's interesting, like if this is fixed on the 12th, fixed then that makes me wonder why they picked that. Sure. It's very interesting. And um, in in old Gaelic as well, we didn't have months. We really just had four, we had seasons. There was just right. four names for four seasons. Um, right. And again, a lot of them like uh, the, the sp um, spring has the kind of Gaelic for the, the wolf. Um, so, mm -hmm. and again, that's what January is now. So they're kind of, again, mixed and matched a little bit, but. Uh, well, maybe they we're... divided it based on when they noticed the equinoxes or something and then just cut it yeah. in four parts. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, you're, you're right. You're just absolutely... guessing. Yeah. So yeah. many things, if you break it, the, you boil it down, it goes back to something they observed in nature, why they decided this in the first place. It's yeah, just figuring out what, but, ah. Well, I'd love to hear your album one day. I hope you post your singing. 100%. I, we we're so excited about this because we had a wonderful composer who took these old songs, sometimes recordings from the 30s or 40s of an old man with a little scratchy recording <laughs> and he created these stunning pieces of, of music with instrumentation and harmonies i just nice. hope we can do them justice because they really are beautiful so your life before this pandemic year and tiktok was pretty like singing but you also do sports right yeah so sadly we have i have a real life as well so um, I, <laughs> <laughs> I remember um <laughs> Catherine, I've only done one work. I, I mean, work has been challenging uh, for me the last year, but I yeah. did one work trip in the yeah. last year. And I remember when I, I thought, well, it'd be maybe quite interesting for people to see what I do or where I go. And I was working in Namibia in, in Southern Africa. Mm -hmm. And somebody, well, actually not just one, but I just remember one particular comment was, um, hold on, you don't get paid to be a woodland fairy. 
<laughs> just That's funny. You, you know, we just thought you like walked around the forest baking cakes, and I was like, I would love somebody to pay me to do that. Yeah. Um, but uh, what at the moment I get paid to do is I work in development in sports. So I'm sent to predominantly developing countries to help their government and sports organizations to get the good out of sport basically. is it sort of so, like um there's one organization i've heard of i think called right to play pretty sure it's called right to play is it that kind of yeah it's it's not th this one uh, i work predominantly in, in basketball and ah. in uh soccer okay um, so they're my two sports and i i just work with the stakeholders there to get the best out of the sport it's probably the best way to put it so meaning what though like creating public spaces organizing leagues like teaching kids or yeah so it's putting structures in place encouraging the stakeholders to get involved uh, both domestic and international yeah. and also just putting us uh, giving the um uh the the sports federations the infrastructure to do to do the right things yeah so did you have a history of competing in sport then or teaching sports before you went into this or well i would say i probably peaked at about under 12 i think uh -huh. i <laughs> I score, I remember scoring a great goal on under 12 for my local <laughs> team and uh, it kind of went downhill from there but I've worked in, in the sports business for about 20 years now so and, and, I, and I'm very fortunate a lot of people I think choose um, uh, a side hustle if that's a way to yeah, say it yeah. because they don't like what they do in their real yeah. life and I love what I do in my real life and I love my baking and I love my singing so uh, I, I'm in a pretty fortunate position. So. Yeah, so how how do you see this going forward now? Because the momentum of your book and uh, teaching the Hebridean culture, I mean, this has just taken off. I mean, it's hard to do all of this at once. You're going to need a staff or what? <laughs> <laughs> well, if you're applying, Catherine, please, that would be great. Um, well, but... yeah, sure, I'll come to Scotland <laughs> and work with you. <laughs> no problem. <laughs> um, I think, I mean, I'm having a yes year. That's definitely what I'm having yeah. this year. It's just, I mean, the opportunities are, I can't, be, I can't believe it. I'm so excited. And I'm excited that <laughs> it's not only people far away, like in North America that it's resonating with. Um, over the, it, because I think it's only the last maybe month or so that people in Scotland have really learned about it. Mm. And, um, the positive feedback from people at home on the islands that means a lot it, yeah and it means so much because yes. um a lot of brands that have used the hebridean name and this is i'm not saying this is in a bad way i think but most of the times they're not from the islands oh really I, yeah huh. maybe they're people who have come to the islands and seen the opportunity and taken it oh, all right like a tourist and maybe we never have um, and so I think people are enjoying the fact that it's a local boy um, who is who is making this happen and promoting it in a positive way. Yeah, much more authentic. Yeah. And so, yeah, the book comes out in September, which mm -hmm. is phenomenal. Mm -hmm. and it is. <laughs> yeah. Then um, last week I was filming with the BBC Travel Show, which is only watched by 90 million people a week around the world. Uh, it's no big deal. And I'm showing them, we went lambing with my brother. I taught them how to make the, uh, the clutey dumpling um, and had a lovely conversation. And that is, that'll go out on BBC World and BBC News uh, across the world in June. So, so you got to be um, ready for that. So I mean, my gosh, one, one little media spot that people see and you will, it, it'll, it's a landslide. Well, let's, so. <laughs> see. let's see. I, as I said, I'm just what going to, to see what happens um, and just try and say yes to things I enjoy. Yeah, it's that's this chance thing. It's 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 nice to say yes to things, but then sometimes some things don't resonate with yes. with brand or me or whatever. And I've, I'd say I've made a couple of wee mistakes, um, but I think most of the time my my own common sense has, has got what mistake. kind of what kind of mistake what do you mean like you felt like ah this didn't really click or you felt like it would harm the 
they didn't understand what you were presenting or yeah i think i think working with people that really understand scotland understand the hebrides and understand the story is very important and then sometimes when people offer you things you don't have to say yes even no. though you think oh I, I mean i you know it would be nice to have a new microwave oven or something like that but <laughs> then you think to yourself what do I have to do to get this? Why that's the price of the gift. Yeah. yeah. Are you I'm encountering just, that a lot on TikTok? Like, are you, because are you getting a lot of people that want to send you stuff or they're expecting something out of this connection? Um, you know, I've made some great friends on, on, on TikTok and I love the, those kind of collaborations. That's absolutely wonderful. Mm -hmm. well, uh, inside TikTok, uh, I, I'm trying to work with brands that really work with me. So, um, you know, I, you might have noticed, Catherine, I sometimes use whiskey in yes, my recipes. Yes, I have. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I thought more and more as the February, <laughs> March went on, but I'm not sure yeah. if I was imagining that. <laughs> <laughs> um, so working with a distiller is great. Yeah. Um, we have those beautiful glass products. bottles are gorgeous that you're using. For sure. Sorry to cut you yeah. off, but those are so yeah. pretty. It's cut glass. Mm. Beautiful, beautiful. And then, you know, so it's like that and Scottish honey, that that is great. Mm -hmm. And so I love working with brands like that and, 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 and porridge oats. We, put it this way, if I only had three ingredients, honey, whiskey and porridge oats, I think I could probably keep going for a, a few more months. Yeah, so that's, that's, <laughs> that's what I'm working with. So. But how has it been for you? Like if we talk about just the personal side of handling all of the all of the followers and how you know how that plays out in your daily life it's a lot of people that you're getting that you're acknowledging and getting back to i mean that that in itself is a lot of uh time investment no yeah it is i would probably i mean on a good day when when uh the, the algorithms allow my videos to go out i mean i'm maybe replying to two and a half to three thousand messages a day God um oh my god but, but the thing is Catherine I just feel that um you know I mean from from the beginning the fact that people were so positive or enjoyed my videos so much yeah. it's it was impossible for me not to acknowledge it you know when yes. somebody said anything from I'm going to make that tomorrow or um things about my accent or yeah. of course Shores, who really I think oh have yeah to, the breakout star yes he is <laughs> he so is he's so cute <laughs> <laughs> so for me it was impossible not to acknowledge just the, yeah. the the kindness people were showing and so it does take up time there's no doubt about it but I I really love the fact that um look look we are where we are now Catherine you know we just yeah. started messaging each other and, and and silly things back and forth and uh, I mean that that's 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 absolutely wonderful and I really well, hope that yeah happens. I mean a lot of we're we're here now partly because you took that time to acknowledge because I you know as I said I I'm not really using the app to promote anything this time around I wanted to just be entertained take my mind off COVID laugh at the quirky, crazy things people do. Um, yeah, life hacks, travel, drones flying through Italy. You know, I was like, this is great therapy in the middle of a lockdown. Sure. And I, I just, I did notice, you know, you would, if you're inspired by someone, you would comment and reach out maybe a few times. And there's not that many like yourself that will acknowledge people. And then um, apparently now the app will, will, um, they will block you if you start acknowledging too many people at once. It's true. And yeah. that's like, what are you doing? I, <laughs> it's prob I mean, I will, I will try never to say anything negative about it because it's just- Yeah, I know. So I'm not trying to put you in that position, but-, but I, it's you know. the, I totally agree. There, there'll be nights when I'm replying to messages and, and hopefully just like reaching out to friends or, or new people on the app and I'll say, no, you've, you've talked to too many people. And I'm like- <laughs> oh my goodness like it happens to me a lot and then I feel quite sad because I know some people then don't get the acknowledgement um but yes sadly TikTok doesn't like too much interaction it seems yeah so but it um I just wonder also like 
I don't know. I'm just trying to wrap my head around like lifestyle. You're busy with so much. Mm -hmm. And I'm and, and you're telling me these other huge projects on the go. Just wondering, yeah, don't you need a staff? Or like how does Peter factor in to help you as he is he <laughs> well, you know, what do they say? Give give a busy job, give a busy, busy person a job to do and they'll get it done. I think yeah. I think um myself and Peter's work ethic is is exactly the same. We work really hard we love what we do um peter for those of you who don't know was filming a, his gardening show uh last year um oh, okay. that went out in on bbc and i had to he, because of lockdown he had to teach me how to become a cameraman so i probably <laughs> filmed four of the six episodes and so we just love working together on projects and he has been unbelievably supportive uh, yeah. uh, on this adventure and he's always the first one to like a video or comment uh, and then sometimes he'll just comment because uh, he obviously knows so many of the the names and faces now that yes uh, but he'll reach out and say something as well which is great um, but yeah we we do in the most positive way, like we work, we want this to be a positive place that people enjoy the content. And maybe we are, or I'm lucky is, I've never had to think, oh my goodness, I hope, I hope I make a wee bit of money from, from this, or I hope this right. For me, this is just about the enjoyment and positive energy that I hope I give to people and definitely what I get back from from others. Oh, you definitely do. I'm, I'm sure that's I, I personally think that's a lot of why things work in general in life when you do them out of joy, when they can unfold organically, when they're not linked to needs like finances, yeah. then you're free to create. You're free to say yes or no. You're free to take it a certain and it, it's just beautiful. And like I said before, I'm still constantly impressed by your you make these beautiful tableau, you know, like in one minute, I'm like, in one minute, you've managed to convey your lifestyle in such a rich way. And then it kept evolving as you and then there's Peter and then you shore us and then there's like, we see the boats, we see the islands, which it's like, you're watching this movie unfold, you know, of your lives. And it just feels like such a warm family. I think you've made us all feel like we're part of your family, like slowly letting us all into your family. It's it's really been heartwarming, you know. I'm just one person, but it's done that for me, and I appreciate it. I'm I'm really pleased, and again, um, for for us, the 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 stories we create are ones that we just a hope resonate. People learn something. Um, maybe it's the bacon maybe it's when I do my garlic lessons or just just um I know a lot of people think the minute means you've got to be really fast and you've got to speak very fast and 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 put everything on the fast forward mode but I sort of have tried to do the opposite where I just hope people just kind of go oh what's well, can you hmm, I could yeah. just watch this and the minute might feel a little longer but in hopefully a good way yeah. um yeah definitely um, I, I, I mean, look, I love telling stories and that's for sure. And hopefully with the book, because they've been very kind and the publisher with the book is it's not just a recipe book. There's going to be lots of stories and images, oh, and photography. Um, so hopefully it's going to reflect very much how uh, my TikTok journey has been as well. So, yeah. So you you live sort of half half. Like, aren't you also living in Glasgow, is it? Yeah, so we're very fortunate that we're, uh, so I'm, as I said, from the Isle of Lewis and I spend as much time there as possible. Peter from the town of Oban, which is on the west coast uh, of Scotland. Okay. And his family, and maybe you've seen it, Catherine, but his family have what we call a hut, or maybe you think of it as a cabin uh, okay. that we spend yeah. a lot of time at. And uh, it's just the most, what, I mean, we would move there tomorrow you know it's mm. completely off grid but we just love spending time there and we're it's it's fortunate because well we're both close to our families peter's mom and uh, peter's mom 
uh, particularly some a bit of a tough time she has ms oh. um, it's lovely to be able to spend time close yeah. to her which hasn't been the case obviously during lockdown so we want to to spend more and more time uh there uh she's an amazing woman so uh uh yeah so we're very lucky that we have lots of great family um that we can we can spend time with so yeah i'm so i'm trying to also i always try to wrap my head around like how you guys are doing all of this like Glasgow, if you could make it real for us, how far is Glasgow from your hut? And how how do you get there and bring everything and the boat and the whole thing? <laughs> so uh, to the hut, we drive for about three hours northwest. Three hours, wow, okay. And then um, there is a little bridge that some of you might have seen in, in the videos. It's mm -hmm. called the bridge over the Atlantic. There's only three bridges over the whole of the Atlantic Ocean on both wow. sides. And that's one of them. It's just a little humpback bridge. And we leave the air van there. Uh, we don't have a car anymore because we've always got so much yeah. to yes. that we don't have the van. <laughs> and then we we hide, not really hide because nobody's going to take them, but we, ha we have two canoes under the bridge, like a pair uh. of hobgoblins or something. <laughs> and, um, and then we canoe for about 20 minutes on, a, on good weather. Uh, yeah. And it's just all by itself. It's it's land where his father was was born. Oh wow! Uh, oh, from, from the window of the hut, you can see the island where his father was born, the island where his mother was born, and the island where his grandmother was born. Oh wow! So wow, that's amazing. Just amazing. And that then to amazing. get from from Glasgow up to the to the island of Lewis, it's about. Um, six hour drive to the ferry terminal and then about three hours on the ferry and then another hour back to my village so it's about a 10 hour journey uh to to the island wow all worth it all worth and it. most of your baking is filmed where i uh, just a bit of everywhere to be honest with you yeah oh yeah okay. yeah i mean the lucky so thing this wood was, stove that we see usually this is hut. where that's at the hut that's yeah. at the hut okay yeah yeah. Um, so <laughs> and I, love it. I mean, it took a while to get used to figuring out the temperature uh, when you're using a stove like that. Like that yeah. Basically, it's however much wood you've put in the, <laughs> you've chopped that day will determine what you can bake uh, or okay. what temperature you can bake. Um, but again, slowly but surely, you start to figure out what, what works and what doesn't. So, do you have to bring? a lot of supplies with you like from Glasgow all the time or can you get much stuff when you're out no the hut I didn't imagine but like once, Isle of Lewis you, and the only thing we can do because Peter's dad's uh, uh has a fishing boat so we go ahead and get lobsters and, and prawns um but if you've forgotten something <laughs> then you're eating seaweed no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> eating seaweed. there's definitely sometimes when I'm doing recipes when I go okay I'm gonna make this and then I go okay, I don't have raspberries or I don't yeah, have yeah. self-raising flour. So suddenly <laughs> we're trying something different. Yeah. So I'm sure people are going, I wouldn't, have, I wouldn't have made it that way. But when you, when you don't have everything, you make do with what you have. Yeah, no, it gets you creative. That's for sure. <laughs> yeah. So um, I wonder if you can tell us a bit more about your passion for your area or for Scotland, because I... I don't know if it's just me because I'm aligned with it, but I see more, I feel like I'm seeing a resurgence of Scotland in general. Like as a North American, I, I can't believe how many Scottish TikTok things mm -hmm. I've seen or just, just the pull to go there. And I look at all the comments of people from your videos and others and everyone's like, please take me with you, you know? <laughs> uh, so I just wonder like, is there something going on with Scotland right now? For Do you feel like, they're talking about independence again too right we are and um i think what's 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 fortunate and it's i'm so pleased that um there is uh, a group of scottish tiktokers like natty dread who is the most wonderful singer um and there's 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 so many lochil and hebridean and all, uh, all these people and um we are reflecting a, a positive side of, of scotland which is very very important and for us, you know, the identity has always been there. Mm -hmm. But I think we have had to nearly hide it in a way because of, because of being part of a, a country which 
is starting, the, the, the feeling in the term Britain now is quite negative, you know, over mm. these past few years. Um, and so we have kind of expressed our identity. And I think, I remember when I went backpacking around Europe when I was 18, and when I would, I would always know there was a Canadian, mm -hmm. even though maybe sometimes, to be honest, I wouldn't be able to recognize, you know, which side of the border, but they would yeah. always have a Canadian flag in their backpack, yeah. always, because they wanted to make sure that everybody knew they were Canadian. You Not know? American, exactly. Not American. Yeah. And so <laughs> Scotland is the same. We want to identify as Scottish. Yeah. We just got a, a fantastic um, result at the election, uh, uh, which was last week. Which oh, okay. Put, uh, Scot the Scottish National Party right front and centre for another independence. They are by far the largest party. Uh, there is ah. a majority of independence parties now in power in Scotland. And so for us, you know, we are a strong healthy vibrant successful country mm -hmm. and it, this is nothing against the other parts of the united kingdom it's not it's it's not about yeah. not liking them or liking them but our vision for the future is very different we are more outward looking we want to be part of a global community our views right. on i would say that the best way to sum it up is our government and our people think about the community the all Whereas at the moment, it feels like in England and maybe as well the last wee while in America, where it was about the elite, it was that small rather than the many. And I think that's where the, the divide between uh, the two countries in England and Scotland has become more political and more obvious, I guess. Whereas before mm. it was just, uh, you know, ah, we hate England because, you know, it's like more of a fun, silly thing. Now it's, mm. it's actually quite clear the, the differences, but mm. uh, we just want to stay on the, on the right, right side of history when it comes to people, politics, et cetera. And I really- So um, would, would Scotland then like try to regain ties with the EU and avoid Brexit? Yes. Yes, exactly. So okay. the manifesto says that we to, we are going to uh, leave the United Kingdom Union, Great Britain, uh, but then request to rejoin the European Union. So, um, and it's not, and we're not saying everything's going to be easy, but there's yeah. confidence and, and work to be done to get through that. But that's what we want to do. And can I ask, because I just, I know a little bit, but not that much, but um, how reliant has Scotland been on England or you know Britain financially like is it going to be a hard thing for them to, to take that independence because I know being a Quebecer this is all we've talked about <laughs> right since yeah. before I'm born the ref referendum so you know these issues of separating an identity I get it because I'm living in it uh, with Quebec and Canada and it's complex because Quebec just does not have an army it doesn't have the finances or even just generations of um i don't know what you'd call it but like just trauma from but also like it, it's just a whole huge thing to take your independence right it, it i'm just curious where scotland's at with it like that way sure. if you don't mind i mean we were an independent country longer than we've ever been part of the union the union's the ah, new thing. okay okay you know, scotland scotland has been here for uh, a long time and yeah. Again, um, the media portray us in quite uh, these poor cousins of the North. Um, but to put into context, our oil industry, we produce more oil than Norway. We produce more oil than the United Arab Emirates. Um, really? Our food, oh, and wow. drink, our food and drink industry. Remember, we're a country of 5 million people. England are a country of 55 million people. The food and drink industry of Scotland produces 56% of the UK's food and drink. Now that comes from whiskey and all wow. those other things. We have the fifth wow, largest okay. amount of natural energy being created in Scotland in Europe. Um, so we're not a poor country. We have our own legal system, our own education system, yeah, our yeah, own okay. health system. We have a wonderful inspirational leader uh, in Nicola Sturgeon, who is just everything you want in a leader she really is um but there is negativity about it because people still 
you know, when you have a right wing media and a right wing newspaper yeah. who tell you every day that you're stupid and ugly and wrong for thinking what you think, it's hard for people to, you know, move exactly. forward. There are, no, there are no newspapers or TV stations that are pro independence. So everything is pushed by the people. And, you know, that's sometimes a challenge because, yes, of course, if you read something in a newspaper, you kind of go, oh, maybe, maybe that is true. Yeah. Um, yeah. You know, um, if if we had the same political system as in as Westminster, as the British, um, the Scottish National Party, there's 129 seats in the Scottish Parliament. If we had the same system as Westminster, the SNP last week would have won 109 of the 129 seats. That's how dominant it is. Wow. Their political okay. system means that they don't want that dominance. So yeah. there's list seats and complicated algorithms of how to, to allocate seats. Um, but it, it's, it's my dream to make this, to, to help make this happen. And yeah. all I can do is keep making sure people see Scotland in a positive way. Yeah. Um, and we are very lucky because uh, in, you know, in Canada and the US, there's such a pool, as you said, uh, oh yeah history and identity and th we always get such like listening to what you just said about um the media over there portraying you like some sort of peasant or something that yeah. surprises me because we just have this fairy tale relationship with scotland and i you know you maybe you think we think of braveheart the movie and that's, that's fine that's you okay. think of lord of the rings movies. even though it was filmed in new zealand <laughs> but you still like we have that kind of relationship and yeah. and people a lot of the time probably just conglomerate the uk as all one entity and don't separate scottish and english uh even me until i saw braveheart i was like i knew we were scottish english mixed in the family going way back on both sides and i wasn't real to me how different they were that movie woke me up and I yeah. started to look at the differences and I'm still on that journey. And they are, yeah. they're very different, very different way of thinking and way of life. And um, remarkably, um, Scotland has a lot to thank Mel Gibson for. <laughs> <laughs> it does. Well, his, the, his William Wallace role was probably one of his best of his life, I'd say. <laughs> And Outlander, I'm sure Outlander has done wonders for you or no, yeah. for Scotland? Well, I, actually, I've never seen it. I, I don't think really? I, don't, I don't think anybody in Scotland's actually ever seen it, but... Um... You're kidding. It's so good. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe it's because the, it ta the whole premise around the Battle of Culloden is a little... Is it still hard to talk about? Well, I'll say I heard a little bit of that, a little bit of the Gaelic. The Gaelic isn't too authentic, but oh, um, may, oh yeah, okay. <laughs> but okay, I promise tonight. I've, I've got a bit of time tonight. I'll, I'll watch the first episode and I'll let you know, Catherine. Yeah, watch a couple until you. I mean, Jamie. Okay, I don't know. He, he his Scottish might not be up to snuff for you, but he is an actual Scot. So it's just oh, yes. I don't know how he's had to switch it around a bit for Hollywood. But I don't know, I find they, they, they made it uh, with the stones. I mean, they brought in that magic right away with her going time traveling through the stones. Yes. And you know, that she's um, a nurse or a, a doctor from the, what is it, fifties or something and brings back all her medical knowledge. So she's like a witch healer back in those days and knowing the future, I mean, it's really cool. But none of us over here knew anything about the Battle of Culloden or the clans or honestly, I'm still learning some of this clan, but I feel like people are being called back to their ancestral roots and mm. North America, a lot of us come yes. originally from Scotland or the, or the UK and um, yeah, there's a healing well, in it, in connecting to it. And I welcome all the visitors. I can't wait till everybody can start uh, visiting. Suddenly, yeah. I, as you see, my place is pretty small, so you probably all have to stay in hotels rather than in my <laughs> <laughs> on my floor. But um, yeah, I, I know that uh, through myself and other uh, Scottish TikTokers and that people are. I've got a bit of an energy about visiting, and that for us is just so exciting. As much as I, you know, also can't wait to get back out in some traveling adventures as well. Yeah. 
Yeah, well, I, um, I don't know. I just, like I said, I, th I think I have a theory that a lot of why Lord of the Rings and all these things are so popular in Hollywood, even though they're, is because our DNA, our roots of the early North Americans goes back to this. And part of you, you're relating to it through a fairy tale or a fantasy novel, but you don't realize, no, that's my actual history. My actual DNA comes from this history. And so I've started a little bit as I realized I want to go back. I want to go see Scotland and I want to go stand where I can, where the, where people came from. And I still have to research. I know like um, McDonald clan, I believe is Hebridian, Hebridian. Yes, yeah. So McLeod is from the Northern Hebrides and then you've got MacDonald and then McNeil is our main three in the Outer Hebrides there. Um, okay. We're sometimes friends, sometimes we aren't so friendly, you know. Well, that's the things. thing with the clans too, right? Like <laughs> <laughs> and then the other side of our family is Campbell, I believe, so you can imagine. And I didn't know any of that history until the last several years ago. And then I'm like, oh, so one side of the family killed the other side of the family. <laughs> and then two of them, like a Romeo and Juliet story, emigrated to Canada. Uh -huh. And my dad holds both names, Campbell out, John Campbell Allen. And I'm like, oh, oh poor dad. <laughs> like, <laughs> And, and I just, none of this was ever real. It just seems so, I don't know, it's hard to describe. If you're removed from your roots, then everything gets distorted on some level. And I, so I think it's really cool that so many people are coming back to their Scottish roots. Even, even that, um, I forget the TikToker's name, the guy with, who sang the, the Wellerman song, the, the sea shanty that just yes. blew up and everybody loved. Okay. And he's got some sort of number one record now with this song. Yeah. I agree. Amazing. Amazing. So exciting. So I mean, both of you, it's, it's, to me, it just seems like there's something going on with Scotland right now. So well, keep, keep talking about us. Keep talking about us. Oh, I do. Scotland. I do. All my friends know about my, my Scottish <laughs> baker friend and they still look at me funny. Like Ooh, talk, TikTok. <laughs> well, here we are, aren't we? I'm like, you make friends out of this, exactly. out of this app. It's, it's been really lovely been great really great to meet you Catherine and I hope your listeners enjoy some of our stories uh and uh yeah that's that's uh keep following the journey and, and uh hopefully you'll you'll see me on a book stand or a tv tv soon yeah so just uh to recap for us where can we find you and what are when is your book coming out and your BBC coming out again? So uh, Hebridean Baker is, mm -hmm. my TikTok is my main home, uh, Hebridean okay. Baker. I've just started Instagram, so bear with me. I'm trying to figure out how to use it, but Hebridean Baker and Instagram too. Uh, I can uh, help you on that a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> and then the book is being released in September. It's already on pre-order in the UK and hopefully very soon pre-order in the US and Canada. We'll keep you posted. And then, yeah, BBC uh, World will be releasing the BBC travel show from the Hebrides, I think, at the end of June. Uh, okay. So I'll let every know when that's out as well. Yeah, definitely. And maybe we can have you back once some of these milestones happen and see how life Thanks is for you down the road. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much, Catherine. My pleasure.